Hello and welcome to the show. Now, first things first, we've been talking a lot about our bikes. Well, I say talking, it's more like fighting about whose bike is the best. Which is, of course, mine. But these two don't nope. agree. And most nope. production meetings and filming <laughs> days end with us fighting over whose bike's best. And well, the other day, Tom had had enough. <laughs> and what, and what, why do you think the, tri the Trident's are good then? Because she's never ridden a GS. <laughs> <laughs> or, or an XR, for that matter. Or an XR, yeah. How, how do you not know? How do you know I've never ridden any of these bikes? You can get on a GS. Or an XR. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've got little legs. You couldn't. You couldn't. <laughs> No, no, I know you're just all saying it's not the fact that I can't get on it, it's the fact that you're implying I would drop it. I know what you're all saying. I know. You said it, you not all. me. I didn't didn't even enter my mind. No, no. whatever, whatever. No. Okay, 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 okay. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, so, Graham, you think your you? XR is the best bike? <laughs> Do that again, Tom. You think your XR is the best bike? Well, cool. well, Bruce, you I, think your BMWs, your GS is the best bike? No, I know, I know, yeah. Okay, and Christy, you think your Triumph Trident's the best? Well, obviously, it's the best okay. bike. Right, tell you what we're going to do. If you send us off road, Tom, I'm going to spit the dummy. We're going to settle this argument because I'm bored of every time we get on one of these calls, you guys spending half an hour of our like 40 minutes that we have to talk about the show arguing about who's got the Someone's best one's tired <laughs> i'm a bit hangry okay i'm a bit hangry so this is what <laughs> we're going to do you guys are going to make adverts for your bikes oh. what you're going to do you each have to make a what do you reckon 30 seconds or one minute ad 30 One seconds. minute. 30, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. But like seconds. a proper TV advert. You know, something that yeah. you give to the manufacturer and they'd use it to sell your bike. Make that. You have to. I want you to do whatever you guys want to do. Go off and make whatever you want to make. Um, I want to make sure you need to film behind the scenes as well. Film behind the scenes yourselves. Okay, so make sure. That you're filming everything you in do portrait. in portrait process, um, and if you do in portrait, Christy, I will literally murder you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> do it, do it, do it. If, if I get the whole advert from you in portrait, I am literally just going to lose my. So Tom issued that challenge, and today we get to see each other's adverts for the first time. Just before we get to that. I've owned a Honda Fireblade since 1997. I still ride it regularly. It still starts first time every time. But last year, Honda completely revamped it. But would it persuade me to upgrade? When I was given the option to review any bike I wanted for Motorbike TV, the choice was really very simple. And that was for two good reasons. The first was, it's the first time this bike's had a major revamp since 2008. And the second reason is that I've had a very long and personal history with it. That bike is the Honda Fireblade. You might well ask, what have Honda done to this most recent iteration of the Fireblade? Well, they're very clear about it on the marketing blurb. This is a track bike that can also be ridden on the road. So what's at the heart of these changes? Well, it's MotoGP DNA through and through. The lead designer on the project comes from MotoGP. The engine has the same internal dimensions as a MotoGP engine. The fins, just here, straight from MotoGP. And, HRC, Honda Racing Corporation. They do not put this label on bikes lightly. This is one heck of a machine.
now that we have that cleared up, what exactly has changed on the bike? Well, pretty much everything really. This is a whole new type of blade. The riding position has changed. Your feet are further back and slightly higher. The seat is 10 mil higher and the bars lowered. It's a thoroughly race-like position, which would have been awesome when I was in my 20s. Now though, well, let's just say a stretch at the traffic lights is a nice relief. The pegs are not the only thing that has moved back. Honda have stretched out the chassis by extending the swing arm, but somehow, through what I can only assume is magic, they haven't had any weight to it. The bike tips the scales at 201 kilos. The bike is full of MotoGP DNA, from the engine configuration to the fairing wings, the electronics package and the horsepower. More on that later. On the road, well, of course you can ride this on the road. It is road legal. I think the question that should be asked is, would you want to ride it on the roads? And I have no issues with saying that, because for me, well, absolutely not. Not a noob, no way. This machine's home is most definitely on the track. Tom, I honestly don't know whether I want to puke or knock one out. <laughs> I've only been in it for a couple of hours and that is just the most wonderful and horrendous mix of adrenaline and utter fear I have ever ridden. There is absolutely no way in the world that I can start pushing this bike on public roads. And in fairness, I probably couldn't even start pushing it on a track. But I do want to bring it to a track just to see what it's capable of in my hands. Now, do not get your hopes up. I am not a track rider. I don't think I've ever got my knee down. But I do want to see what this bike is like around the track. Now, remember right at the very start, I said that I had a long history with the Fireblades. Well, in fact, it's 23 years of history because that's how long I've owned one for. And here he is. In 1997, 900cc RRV Fireblade. And like I said, I've owned him for 23 years. Now, he's got comfort handlebars on him because I'm getting old and he's got lowered foot pegs because I'm getting old. So he's not gonna be a patch on that bike, but I do wanna see just how far behind he is. Now, I am no racer. In fact, I might well be one of the least qualified people Honda have given this bike to to test. But on this small track, even I can tell how much the Brembo brakes and Olin's semi-active shock and forks give huge amounts of confidence when it comes to the corners. As I mentioned before, the engine also is very different from a Fireblade with the new short stroke motor, getting the revs high is key to performance. For example, on my old Fireblade, the red line was at 10,500 revs, this new bike doesn't really come alive until well over 11,000 and goes up to over 14,000 RPM. I didn't get this bike close to its limit, I barely got it out of first gear on this track, but when first gear can take you to nearly 80 miles an hour, then I don't feel quite so bad. My old faithful RRV was always a bit of a soft ride, you could do a track day as happily as ride 500 miles a day on a day trip. The new Fireblade rewards effort on the track. Even I was getting faster and faster. I said right at the start, I am not a track rider, but this thing is a weapon. I mean, I'm barely moving around the bike. I know I should be hanging my weight off all onto one side and I'm trying my hardest, but I'll tell you what, when you've had five hip replacements, then you can tell me where to put my legs. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, it is also absolutely knackering. It just gives you a whole nother appreciation for the athletes that are any form of motorcycle racer. They're all astonishing athletes and that's all well and good but sometimes you just <laughs> cling on for dear life. All right, now I'm on the 1997 24 year old Fireblade. Let's just be very clear about this. This bike was 125 horsepower when it was new, not 214. So it's going to be a bit different. 
So in theory, I'm never going to get it round at quite the angle that I had to the bike at. Well, I haven't said that. I didn't get the other bike particularly at an angle either. But you know, the biggest thing that strikes you when you first start riding this bike is the brakes. It's the brakes that are so different. I'm squeezing these brakes and thinking, I'm not stopping. The difference is absolutely astronomical. Well, we've had a couple of hours here at one of the drift limits tracks at Bovenden Airfield. In fact, the B17 track. And it's got some really, really important history that I couldn't quite work out how to share with you. So you're just gonna have to listen. Bovenden Airfield was home to the American Air Force from 1943 to 1963, and was known as US Air Station 112, and was where the famous Memphis Bell flew back to the United States after its final mission, becoming the first B-17 to complete its tour of 25 missions. Bovenden also housed the 8th Air Force headquarters and the air technical section, but it had even more claims to fame. During World War II, several film stars were assigned to the base, including Clark Gable, James Stewart and William Holden, and the base had visits from Bob Hope, Mrs. Eleanor Roosevelt and Glenn Miller during the war. Even General Eisenhower's personal B-17 was housed at the base. In 1944, Bovenden became the base for the European Air Transport Service, where a huge amount of American troops flew back to the US before returning to RAF control in 1947. Now the airfield is home to a wide mixture of businesses after being shut down in 1972. And if you head there now, you'll find the Drift Limits Driving School, a huge Sunday market, commonly known as Bobby Market, and ITV Studios. I can't put it off any longer. It's time to go and do a couple of time laps and I have got to get a proper wiggle on because it's starting to rain. So don't expect anything spectacular from my riding. Feeling queasy. There is absolutely no doubt that this is a sensational track weapon that you could also ride there legally on the roads. And any comparison between this and my old file blade is utterly null and void on any level, whether that be technical or character. But it does raise a question for me, which is by making this such a track focused weapon. I know this is the SP version, so maybe this doesn't apply equally to the regular Fireblade. Have Honda slightly alienated the buying public who used to love the fact that it was a slightly softer bike to ride? Wait, 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 wait. You totally wussed out of even answering that question then. Which one would you choose? The new one is scintillating. Got to admit it. Yeah. However, I would still go with the 97 Fireblade. Is that because it has something to do with you being slightly more mature, shall we say? It's a little bit rude. <laughs> I didn't write it. <laughs> well, maybe just a little bit. Maybe. It is a little bit easier on my back, I've got to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would 
my back and my heart would go with the old fire blade. I bet. So now I get to go and have a look at a brand new British motorcycle company who are doing things somewhat differently. Today we're here in Wigan, Manchester at the UK's newest motorcycle company, Langan. Now the boys here have been engineering something pretty spectacular. Let's go and have a look. taking me around the workshop on a little tour, I noticed that there is some Langham beer hanging around. So I've decided that this is going to be my thing. My interviews are going to consist of lots of cheers, <laughs> cheers. and lots of beer. That's actually really nice. That's right, isn't yeah, it? it is. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris, tell me a little bit about the name Langham. Uh, well, the... There could be a really interesting marketing story around this. So, you know, right. uh, we're the first guys to pioneer uh, the combustion engine uh, alongside Nic Nicholas Otto was Eugen Langen. It's not that. It was just my old nickname from college. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, Chris, we, you disappointed <laughs> me now with that. So let's just go for... Why, why, why Langen? Why, why is that as a nickname? I, it was just on the rugby field. I, I, came, I, I honestly can't remember where it came from, but it, it, it's one of those things you get introduced in the pub and then it, it stuck it's for a lot of years as you get introduced to sort of new, new people and everything. So, and I, was, uh, I really wanted to revive an old British brand initially, and that yeah. was sort of what I set out to do. And then I was persuaded by friends and family to actually create something new and create a new British brand. So I'm not very good with names, you know, yeah. I'm into the engineering. So just before I was about to launch to the press, I said, well, why don't you use your nickname, you know, Langan. So, and there it is. And yeah. there it is. And what a beautiful bike to have it on. Yes, yeah, so the thing we're really proud of, uh, probably more than anything, is that we, we've been able to manufacture the whole bike, and we're the only people doing this in the industry right now, uh, manufacturing it in the UK. That's all the components. Uh, the chassis is made in the Midlands, the wow. carbon fibre work, uh, hell brakes, KTX suspension. Uh, the engine's Italian, but that's... Uh, we're okay with that because it's design, <laughs> that's manufactured by some ex Ferrari guys, so they are the so best of the best. Okay, you know, yeah. so it's Italian heart, but uh, the rest of the bike is British. And we, you know, we've got some fantastic companies supplying F1 and motorsport and the aerospace, and uh, you know, we want to use them. And you know, we, we've got a great relationship with them. Uh, hopefully, go. One thing that really impressed me is your history with bikes. You have got like a massive, good few years under your belt with it, haven't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, I'm an autom uh, automotive engineer, uh, qualified, uh, and uh, yeah, started out at TVR yep. uh, on four wheels uh, and did some years in the oil and gas, but then, yeah, spent the last last 10 years or so uh, another manufacturer up the road, TCM, yep. uh, got huge opportunities there to, to make some great bikes, yep. uh, but always had this sort of burning desire to do something new, uh, and yeah, something... Uh, a bit different uh, than everybody else. And it certainly is different. The, I think the biggest question is, why a 250 two-stroke for a road bike? Like, why? What, what is, what's going on in your thought process? <laughs> <laughs> so just embellish a bit on that with me, because I just associate, you know, anything two-stroke with more off-road things, so... Yeah, yeah. Why yeah, that's, that's fair to say. Yeah, but I mean, the reason they work in, in off-road so much is because... Uh, they offer great advantages for power to weight, you know, and this yeah. is this is great great for a road bike as well. Uh, yeah. You know, everything I've always done in the engineering life uh, and, and, and personal tinkering with bikes has all been, always been about reducing weight. So uh, a two-stroke engine gives, I mean, this is a 250cc and it gives 75 horsepower, so, you know, it's more like a five or 600cc, but the whole weight of the bike is about 120 kilogram. Uh, you know, it's, it's the engine, but it's, it's yeah. the other parts as well, the carbon fibre and things like that. So... Uh, but the two-stroke, it's just uh, the characteristics of the engine, the sound, the smell, uh, everything about it. And, you know, it, it first identified this engine uh, a few years ago uh, and the technology that was involved, the, uh, the injection system, the fuel mm -hmm. injection system, but the oil injection system. Yeah. And it was initially made for, uh, for a race bike, just to extract more power yeah. and to get the right amount of lubrication everywhere yeah, so the engine yeah. didn't blow up. And, uh, but 
we kind of cottoned on to the idea that this may actually get through emission standards. So mm. uh, wrote a wrote a nice romantic letter to the Italians and <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Warned them. laughs> yeah, and they they were hooked on on this project yeah. and they really wanted to help us out. So you know, we we just it was our job then to create the rest of the bike mm -hmm. to be as special as, as the engine is, the engine uh, it, and it's yeah. something you know it's it's the only two stroke around at the moment. So how does it meet like emission standards then? Yeah, well, this is, this is the really clever bit and the bit that most people don't believe us yet that, that we've actually done it. So uh, the engine has, first of all, it's got fuel injection. Yeah. Uh, it's got every nice bit of two-stroke technology that has been on all the two-strokes of old. So it's got the power valves, con constantly variable. It's got carbon fiber revalves, uh, but it's got a separate PCB, uh, ECU effectively, that, that controls the uh, two-stroke oil injection. So rather than uh, in the past where you're putting uh, a ratio one at 40 to 50 yeah. to one and you've yeah. got you've got it running really rich and burning a lot of oil at the bottom yeah. and it leaves all the deposits on and and at the top inevitably you've not quite enough mm. and it's going to blow the engine up mm. eventually if you're ringing its neck this this adapts across the whole river range so it reads the fuel injection it reads a lot on the engine and there's a there's an oil tank just around here, yeah. uh, little carbon fiber, one liter oil tank yeah and little pumps that feed the oil through these uh, purple hoses here straight into the engine, there's some oil ways that go through directly onto the crank bearings. So yeah. it ranges from about 500 to one to 50 to one. So it's, it's incredible, really. It is, because that was what, one of the questions that I was going through my head was that I, I'm used to having a machine where, you know, you, you pre-mix yourself yeah, and you put yeah. it in. So the actual technology is, is doing that for us. We don't that's even have it, to yeah. think about ratios or anything like that. You have created yeah, something it, which yeah. I mean, I, I had a TZR uh, 125 and it was, I don't know, probably the equivalent of range anxiety at the time. <laughs> Just making sure you've got enough oil, use more oil than fuel in back yeah. then. So this, this takes everything away from the user and yeah. you, know, you top it up once every one and a half, two thousand miles. Uh, and wow. yeah, it does everything for you. It's amazing, I, absolutely amazing piece of, uh, of machinery. It's so impressive. Do you think you are creating artwork and something that I know that you're really passionate about um, designing and getting it, you know, materializing it into real life? Are you selling us artwork or are you actually selling us a bike that we can use on the road? Yeah, well, it's a good question. I mean, the, the intention has always been, I'm just an engineer, you know, mm. I'm not an artist. I know what I like, I know, you know, we've been able to be fortunate enough to style bikes in, in the past, along yeah. with engineering, but you know, I think, uh, in my view, most of the beauty is in the engineering itself. So we put as much of that on display as we can, and, and everybody here, everyone on the team, they're very, mm. uh, very technical and into the detail and the engineering, and, you know, we just take care of every component and how it combines with the rest of it. And, yeah. you know, it's, in the end, it becomes something more than the sum of its parts, I think. But yeah, you know, if you're making a motorbike, uh, why not make it look pretty at the same time? It doesn't, it doesn't cost any more to do that. So. No, and, uh, yeah. and you have succeeded, in my humble opinion, in doing that, because I, I honestly just can't stop looking at her. She is really glorious. Um, how does it feel to, to bring a bike to market? It's a brand new bike. It's, it's nothing that anybody have done for, what was about? 30 odd years with the old cafe stroke. races, yeah. yeah. That's it. yeah. What's it feel to bring it to market? Yeah, br bringing a bike to market is brilliant. Uh, bringing a new brand yeah. into the space, into the British motorcycle industry again, mm. because you know, it's, 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 uh, there's some great brands out there, but it's, it's nowhere near what it used to be. Uh, so that is brilliant, you know, it's, it's nerve wracking at the same time, you know, <laughs> it kind of gave, gave everything up and everybody yeah. here's sacrificed, you yeah. know, big careers in different automotive industries to, mm. to kind of work on this special project. So blood, yeah. sweat and tears, blood, sweat and tears, a lot of late nights, you know, and we, we didn't pick the best timing through all the lockdowns. I mean, it was great really because we had no press asking for press rides. We had no yeah. obligation to take it to shows. Yeah. So we just got our heads down and just developed and developed. Uh, yeah. Do you think having the pressure off really gave you guys, um, you know, a better chance of, working through nitty gritty and, and, and developing something that is the best sort of I think designs. Yeah, yeah, I think it did because we, you know, we wanted to launch the bike uh, in 2020 right. around July time. Yeah. And the bike is completely different now than it was 12 months really? ago. You know, it is, yeah, it's so much better. You know, we, we've, we've gone through multiple iterations on most of the components, you know, mm -hmm. we've, uh, 
And is that just through sort of uh, process elimination? The more you, you know, you're you riding it and, and testing it, is that just something that, uh, you know, is development or... I suppose it's like an ongoing... It's, it's ongoing, ongoing development. Ongoing, you know, yeah. I guess uh, engineers, if they had the way, uh, we would never ever sign anything off. We'd just keep developing it forever. <laughs> so, you know, give us an extra year and you'll get a product yeah. that's better at the end of it. So, yeah, we've enjoyed the extra time, uh, but it's... We've just been itching all the time to get it out in front of people, really mm. get the brand out there and yeah. get, get the bike out there because, you know, we found when people really see the bike and get into the detail yeah. uh, of all the componentry then. Because like you keep saying, I think as well, even though you are just, you know, designing and producing a custom built, beautiful bike, I think what I really love about you guys is that you're actually building a brand which is focusing on customers as well like a bit of a immersive experience for them like like what can we expect um customers to be able to get out of you guys what what can they have yeah. well that that's that is a big part of what we're doing you know it's, it's important to us uh, just as much as the bike is and you know we we're not selling we're not building 100 bikes and then flogging them yeah. uh, to dealers and things like that we're finding 100 people who want this bike yeah. and we're building a bike specifically for them so you know starting from from the very beginning uh the customers will come here. We'll take we'll, we'll take their inside leg measurements. You know, all, all, <laughs> all, all the stats. It's, it's tailor made. Yeah, I mean, you know, we change the springs, uh, yeah. valving in the suspension, the ergonomics. Yeah. Everything is is adaptable. So depending on the size, the weight, the type of riding they're doing, uh, and then we have you know some some standard customizations like color schemes. Yeah. We can change carbon fiber weave colors, yeah. paint schemes, anodizing. Uh, chassis colours yeah. and people are asking for other things such as bikini fairings on there and everything Tidy. like that so and we you know any other manufacturer would say no sorry that's yeah. not on the list but we yeah. we said okay yeah that sounds interesting Absolutely, let's yeah. uh, let's have a go on you know so we we do I won't say we'll do anything but we'll do pretty much anything <laughs> I think that's going back to like the the engineering protocol really isn't it if somebody yeah. comes in and says oh I'd like this and yeah. if it gives you a little bit of a challenge as well, yeah. I think it's something that you want. That's why we get out of bed, you know. Yeah. Uh, we we don't want to mass produce bikes, you know. We yeah, we want to be a really strong brand in in, mm. in in the industry, but we want to do it our way, and we want to create really special machines that are tailored to people uh, and offer something a bit different. And we believe, you know, that the bike itself is has got to be right for British roads and riding yeah. on, on European roads and everywhere. So we've. We've really focused on the ergonomics and the geometry and everything like that, so it is actually a rideable bike. You know, yeah, it's, it's uh, it, we've touched on it. Um, you are only making a hundred. We're only gonna make a hundred, yeah. So yeah. after that hundred have been made and have been bought and your customers are happy, what's the what's the future for Langham? What what are you thinking of turning your capable hands to then? <laughs> well, we've got. We've got some projects on the go at the moment. Yeah. Uh, that we so we've got another side of the business that is purely engineering and automotive right. development for for ourselves and for other companies, and we're we're exploring some uh, some modular battery systems for vehicles that we're working on with some four wheel manufacturers and two wheel manufacturers cool. developed our own yeah. batteries. So we we do a lot of other work uh, yeah. that uh, alongside the two stroke. So you know we we don't rely on the two stroke, but this is what we all get out of bed for. Yeah. Uh, so we're doing a lot of work for engineering uh, people, some, some styling, some engineering. Uh, but then in terms of Langan, uh, we've got some really interesting plans coming up. I can't say too much about them right I now. I knew you'd say that. I, I could feel I that can, vibe from you, but yeah. I need to supply you <laughs> with sorry. more of that, I think, yeah. to, uh, yeah. and I'll ask you another question. <laughs> um, so more, more yeah. motorbikes? More motorbikes. It's not two stroke. So the next, the next model will, you know, we, it won't be a two-stroke. Uh, so this is the two-stroke. This is this the is, only this is one, one. So this and is it chance. is just the hundred. It's the hundred. So wow. Uh, yeah, it'll be something different. It won't be this cafe racer style. Yeah. style. Uh, something a bit different. Something still a bit special, different than everybody else is doing. And cool. Yes, yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's pretty exciting. And then you know we're we've got people from all over the industry here, and you know who knows where the future will take us. It may may not just be two wheels. But Mm, a little hint there then. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't say that. Have another sip of beer. Go on. <laughs> I know what you guys want to see. I know you want to see me take this beauty out there and give it some absolute welly. But sadly, the guys at the DVLA have kind of let us down a little bit. The V5 isn't quite ready yet. Cannot believe my Welsh clan has let me down. But in the meantime, 
take a little look at this footage. <laughs> Langen is already working on engineering projects with other companies. They aren't solely basing their business on just one bike. So it's clear that the Langen name is here to stay. But what about the bike that carries that name so proudly? Would the term perfection be too much? <laughs> I don't think so. The quality is stunning and everything from the 250 two-stroke engine to the kickstand has been designed for performance and aesthetics. I genuinely just cannot think of a more beautiful bike. This is sure to become an instant classic and it's a fantastic investment for any bike collector that will walk through that door. Genuinely, I just cannot wait to see what Langen do next. I can't say I'm usually a fan of the 250 two-stroke, but, but that bike is beautiful. Yeah, it, is it is absolutely a stunner. Now, I must apologise because I interrupted you earlier when we were about to talk about our adverts. But before we get to see them, let's have a little look at what was going on behind the scenes as we were making them. There's no competition here, is there? It's easy. Of course we all know what the best bike in the world is. So we've just come off a Zoom chat with Tom and he has given us our final challenge for the series. Now, for those of you of a certain age, basically my age or a bit younger, you will remember a certain advert with a gentleman called Victor Kayan who liked a shaver so much, he bought the company. I've been having a little think and I've got a little idea and I really need to call somebody see if they can help, so watch this space. Okay, so that'll do. So I've just had the okay off Tom to help me with the effort. <laughs> Technically not cheating, so. so. When I went back and checked, that advert was exactly 30 seconds long. So that's what I tried to achieve. Now, unfortunately, I had to film this myself, so it's filmed with a static camera. I did try and create as close to the original as possible. I put a suit and tie on. I made it look old and grainy. I even put some old clip sound effects on it. I tried to time exactly what I did to the exact second what they did on the old Victor Kayam advert. I'll do. Tom's going to be here in about nine hours and this is what I've got so far. There's the script. <sighs> He's gonna kill me. That'll do. So once again, Christy cheated. <laughs> I didn't cheat. I, I didn't cheat. It is totally not my fault if you two can never interpret the rules properly. You know it's gonna be very embarrassing if you lose. Yeah, I know. <laughs> totally. Anyway, let's, let's have a look. Come on. Can I just say, I literally had about five minutes to do my... Oh, his excuses already. Here okay. he goes. It's so, not my best well, one. We're going to go... Mine's top of the list, so we'll do mine first. Hello, I'm Graham Hoskins, and I used to be a dedicated KTM rider until my friend Tom got me to ride this BMW S1000XR. They said its combination of athleticism and long distance performance would ride as close to perfection as possible. Or they'd, well, actually, they wouldn't give me my money back. I was delighted and impressed. So impressed, I bought one. The BMW S1000XR brand new will cost you 16 grand. My one cost me considerably less. The BMW S1000XR is riding perfection. Or oh, now, I'll give you, uh, well, let me get back to you on that. Can, can I redo my video, please? <laughs> Do you get the reference? No. 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 What part of that was, like, the you, advert? Well, he's, just like, he's just, like, stressing up with a dodgy, <laughs> dodgy accent. <laughs> 
<laughs> I like the com I like the com I like the razor so much. I bought the company, Victor Kayam. Oh yeah. The nineteen seventy yeah, yeah, advert. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I've seen you've said nineteen seventy. Yeah, I, I know Sorry, you're, too, you're, too, you're, too, you're too young. You're too young. I thought Bruce might get it. There was a guy in the seventies who did an advert where he, Remington razor. He liked it so much he bought the company. Because I know a lot about razors. <laughs> anyway, so I was trying to be Victor Kayam. I thought you were going to be somebody. I thought you were doing a bit of like a Rick Mail or something. Right, now you're. Uh, okay. uh, no, now yours be. Yours next. It's not like I do this. It for was a very living. well put together, though. I've got to be I, honest. I, 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 I I'm tried. impressed with the smoothness yeah. and the it's riding perfection I did try. tagline, yeah. I tried to get that actually tagline. second for second next to the. <laughs> you're going to have to keep awake for this. We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three, listen. Can I, can I just jump? You're looking at... Tom told me it was rubbish. I don't think it's rubbish at all. <laughs> Do you not? No. I think it's garbage. <laughs> so smooth. Was that? I that thought was so it was really smooth. good. Smooth? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, no. No. It's horrendous. It's, it's, it's horrendous. I was just no. literally like, I've got to go. Right, that I, thought that was, I thought that was really good. Yeah, but where were you in it, though? I thought, I thought, I'm I on thought the, track. the rules... The track's me. Oh, that was you, yeah. wasn't it? Are you sure? No, I, I thought, yeah, it, it's clips saying, yeah. being clever about the fact... Yeah, you get it. Yeah. He gets it. The words are saying all these things, isn't it? and the clips yeah. are saying it's not. Well, I got that. Thanks, I yeah. obviously got that as well. I just didn't know you were in it. I was, <laughs> I was expecting it to be much worse than that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You made it out. Uh, now, now come to Chi one. The, I mean, bear in mind, you've had some proper this. this better be absolutely banging. Who is, it, who is it you got to, um, to do yours again? Okay, who? Let's just watch it. Will that be the actual <laughs> producer of this show? No, yeah. let's just watch it okay. and see. Uh... It's better because otherwise Tom gets the merits as well. Be strength. Be, strength. be passion. This is so Tom already. It's just a bloody be trident. Be feminine. <laughs> Be manly. Be power. Be triumphant. I'm a Daisy of Feminine Be Megan trident by triumph. Uh, so you cheated again? Basically. <laughs> yeah, that, that. I didn't I didn't cheat. How do I possibly cheat? Because what? the producer of the TV show did your ad And we could tell. <laughs> that, that was so it Tom. It was so... Just every single bit of it. It could have been just Tom altogether, though, because I had some, you know, directorial input in it. So we're never, we're never going to mm. sort this, are we? So, no. folks, <laughs> there's only one way to settle this. It's down to you. We're going to put all three videos on the show's YouTube channel. You have until the start of next season. Yeah, we're coming back next season. Of next season's show to cast your vote and tell us which one you prefer. And don't forget, you're voting for the best advert, not for the bike you like the most. Because that will be the GS <laughs> Best bike. Absolutely. <laughs> and on that note, it's the end of the show. Ride safe and we'll see you next time. I get to go and look, I'm so sorry. I get to go. Get to, get to I, ride. And now I get to go. Oh, right, Tom, you're gonna have to work your magic here, pal. Too wide. Mm -hmm. Too wide. <laughs> oh, I know, but I just thought I, there was a gap, so I couldn't, yeah, you can use it if you want to. <laughs> it's slightly less expensive. Ordinary far bay, brother. More than 15 years. That is sexy, guys. Okay.
<laughs> you see him in the mirror. <laughs> Don't do it again. Third time I've done it now today. Good chance to get it a bit. This is really, <laughs> this is really nice. It's, right, it's not that I'm shocked that it wasn't. You know, it's just just really nice. It's just easy drink, it. All right. That was the cheer. Yeah. All right. It's on camera. All the best you. I can't ride it, but what I can do is start it. Listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep listening. <laughs> there is no doubt in my mind that this pike is not something special. It is a piece. It's not something special. It's not. It's not.